And a good evening, everyone. Chris McDonald with the Mac File Special Faith Broadcast. We're always glad to have our dear friend Mark Taylor, and tonight is no exception. We are very honored to have him back. This is his first interview back after a while. It's first, our first interview with him since 2019. Mark, it's good to see you, pal. I'll tell you what I said before we had all these little tech uh, adventures. Uh, you are a brother from another mother. You are my amigo, and uh, we appreciate you, man. It's good to see you, though, seriously. And uh, looking forward to this discussion. I know it's going to be power-packed like it always is, my friend. Well, thank you for having me. It's always an honor to be on the show, brother. Mark, uh, 2019 is here. We've got a new year. 2018 seemed to be a strategic year for moving pieces around. Uh, <clears throat> and I think both spiritually and in the natural, in the, in the political realm, too, in Washington, D.C. But now uh, I think 2019 is, is sort of like when you do all the maneuvering, you do all your moves, and now it's time to, to make the move and to make the call and to do and to see things happen in a real way. And uh, I know that the Lord has been speaking to you this past year a lot, and I know that uh, there's some things that uh, he showed you. And I'm just going to release you right now, buddy, and I want you to just sort of jump off the diving board and, and talk to us a little bit about some of the things you see coming for 2019, and, and we'll go from there because we got a lot of things to talk about today. Well, I think 2019 is going to be very intense, so people need to put their uh, racing harnesses on because things are going to accelerate, basically, you know what I mean? Uh, it's going to be a continuation of 2018, but it's just going to be, uh, this is going to go to a whole other level, uh, you know. Um, but, yeah, we just we just keep moving forward is all we can do. Yeah, we can keep moving forward. Exactly right, Mark. And, uh, Mark, I'm going to ask you this. <clears throat> President Trump seems to be under attack. He's been under attack from day one. Have you seen an increase in that a little bit in the spirit realm? Do you believe yeah. that, that this year is bringing a little bit more intense? It seemed to me, I, I tell you, I'll, I'll put it like this. When he came into office in 2017, there was a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of uh, expectations, a lot of things that people were expecting. We saw those things happen. He made, he made a lot of tremendous moves. 2018 to me was a little different, and it was it was sort of a sense that I got that – the warfare bumped up a little bit against him, and he still got a lot accomplished this past year, but it just seemed the turmoil over him uh, increased. And we know that's from the enemy. We know that's the enemy's doings, and the, he wouldn't be the devil if he didn't fight what right. God is doing. Right. Uh, right. Satan, Satan don't ever do anything original. He always responds to what God is doing on the earth and in the heavenlies. And uh, he's been responding a lot in 2018, and I just I see that continuing. Yeah, you know, uh, that's because the enemy's time is short. They know yeah. justice is about to be served. Uh, it's being served. I mean, you know, even though it may not be the high-profile justice stuff that we are looking for as people, uh, I think some of that is already going down, believe it or not. They're just not going to go public with a lot of this stuff. Uh, it's like I say, things are going to get very intense uh, very quick, I think. Uh, you know, um, but people just have to – they got to relax. Uh, you know, they, they have to realize that there is a plan in place, that God's in control of this whole thing, and, uh, you know, we, we, we live, Chris, in this instant gratification society where, you know, we're so used to picking these things up. At the touch of a button, we got our answer right then. You know what I mean? It's this microwave society. I deal with it in the prophetic all the time. Uh, you know, people want something to come to pass. They want it right now. And so we, we live in a society because this is the way they have programmed us. This whole mind programming thing is going to be mind numbing. And when people find out just how bad it really is, we've been programmed to want everything right now. And so they look at this, this they think justice is not being served because it's not on the mainstream media. Well, the mainstream media is an enemy of the people. We already know that. So, I mean, why in the world would they ever broadcast their moves that they're doing right now? You know what I mean? So we're having to find out through back channels, uh, which we know what some of those are. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, what's actually going on, what's taking place. I mean, we've had people like John McCain, Bush 41, just passed away, uh, you know, which would, or said was, was, was going to happen at some point, um, which I believe that, that Bush 41 it was, I mean, it could be, I don't know, he could have been dead for a while, and he just been waiting to yeah. drop it at the right time. Uh, you know what I mean? I had that conversation with Greg Hunter. Greg can verify that we had that conversation, what, three months before Bush 41 passed away. I said, it wouldn't surprise me if they had him, you know, on ice for a while and are waiting for the, and I mean, we just we just we don't know so i mean uh but the point being is that we live in this instant gratification and people have these unrealistic expectations that's what i deal with in the prophetic constantly with people is the unrealistic expectations they think something they rehearsed this movie in their head thinking that something's going to come to pass the way they think it's going to happen but god's always a thousand steps ahead of us and it never comes to pass the way we think it should or it could be something totally different you're I mean, we've talked about this before on your program. Well, the same thing's happening 
uh, move movement. Everybody's looking. They want justice. They want the mass arrests. Folks, people have been arrested. What the problem is, is we've been getting in this dimension, if you will. I know this is kind of getting deep, but you get in this dimension of doom and gloom, and your perception is all you look. Yeah. We, the good thing is right now. And I'm not so sure that some of the stuff hasn't already happened. It just hasn't gone public. So, I mean, we, we just, as a society or as patriots, as Christians, whatever the case may be, whatever it is that you call yourself, we just need to take a step back for a minute, take a deep breath, and know that there is a plan mm -hmm. in place that God is going to mm -hmm. handle this thing. But here's the other thing that we got to be careful with, too, is that if they rush the plan, it, this is a very fine line we're, we're treading right now, and I want people to understand this. If they rush the plan, and they don't have the right assets in place, such as certain judges in certain places, and some of these people are going to walk. That's now, right. I would rather wait a little longer and make sure these people never see daylight again, and they sweat it out in Gitmo the rest of their lives, basically. I would rather wait a little longer and see that versus to push something and then mess something up. So we, we, we've got to be patient in, in that aspect. So we've got to get out of this instant gratification or this movie we're rehearsing in our head thinking this is the way it's supposed to come to pass. We need this stuff right now. I get it. We need justice right now. Justice is here. Justice is taking place right now. You're just not seeing it or hearing it right now because it's happening behind the scenes. Right. Well, Mark, it's very, very possible, if not likely, that President Trump has already, uh, you know, he's listen He's not being called unaware by anything no. the deep state's doing. They have gone eerily quiet since the funeral uh, on their Twitter feeds. A lot of people have noticed yeah. that uh, some of those Christmas tweets by Hillary and Obama, uh, you know, were basically a year or two old. It was almost like somebody had, some kid had went in there and typed something up just for them to have it. Bush 43 hasn't been heard from since the funeral on Twitter. And uh, look, there's no telling what's happening to those people, but I want to key in on something you just said because I think it's important. And it's not just the fact that we want to see the people that are arrested be arrested and there not be any kind of loophole that they get out of, Mark. But in addition to that, we don't want innocent people around them hurt either. And we don't want to see the country exactly. descend into chaos and, and right. uh, unrest. And I think if it's done strategically and done in a, in a, in a normal, just, justifiable way, sort of pardon the pun, and, and done in a way that President Trump's doing it right now, it's going to be far better for the nation. Because, look, the devil would love nothing else than to see Baltimore, L.A., Chicago, Atlanta, all these major cities, New York, go up into flames because you and I both know, buddy, this is not going to go over well with the deep state and the elite right. and the people that's behind this stuff. The George Soros's of the world, they're going to have their people probably on cue. That when this goes down, you get out there and burn stuff down. And you know and I know that's probably the plan. And I just think if it's done right, uh, that's going to be less. That's going to be a little bit less than if it, right. it would be if they hauled everybody off into jail in a public display on television. Right. And, you know, that, that's the other thing is that you don't – we're going to have civil unrest whether we like it or not. So exactly. that, 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 that's coming. That's coming. It's just a matter of how bad is it going to be. You know, they're, they're trying to educate mm -hmm. people at what's coming. Uh, if you notice on Fox the other night, they played uh, something about the Clintons and, and you know, yep. their, all their stuff that was going that's been going on for years. Now, why are they doing that? Why all of a sudden would Fox do that? It's because simple fact is, is they're trying to prepare the people for what's coming. They're, they're trying to educate people that these are criminals. These guys are not patriots. They have committed treasonous acts and they're going to go down. Now, we, we've got to be careful how we do it. There's a fine line, like you said, because the civil unrest could get really bad and it turns into a civil war, which is what we don't want. Because you don't want someone like the UN or you want some other foreign country coming here and invading us right in the middle of a civil war. So we, this is where we got to be careful. But the bottom line is this. I got this folder right here. It's full of prophetic words that, that God has given me. They're God's words. I, I give all the glory to God for it, the Lord Jesus himself. But the Lord said justice is coming. This is what people have to stand on. Justice is coming. I have said in there that the Clintons were going to go down or God has said that the Clintons were going to go down. Obama was going to go down. It doesn't matter how long it takes. The bottom line is it has been spoken. It has been decreed. It's done and over with. It's already happened in the spirit. Now it just has to manifest in the natural. So people just need to sit back and relax and get your popcorn. Watch the show, folks. Because I mean, this is just, I'm serious because this is, look, this is, is going to happen. Just, yep. 
We hey, can uh, just... Here we go. Sorry about that little blip there. Mark, you're absolutely right. Our, our mutual friend, Melissa Leggett, uh, the other night, I, I basically told her almost verbatim what you just said. I said, you know, I said the spirit realm, people don't understand that things that are decreed in the spirit, there's a time element. I mean, there, there's a big time element, and that time element is in God's hands. That's never usually revealed to man. If you think about it, even in the prophetic things of Daniel, uh, you know, God said these things would happen in the end, but he didn't give Daniel a calendar. He didn't pull a calendar out and right. say, Daniel, this is going to happen in the year 2024, 2035. He didn't give Daniel any of that. He didn't give John any right. of that. No prophetic no. word that's been ever been given has been given a timetable. And that's why these foolish idiots that get out here and try to pinpoint the coming of the Lord and the dates, that's just a foolhardy error. And, but Mark, I do sense something's up. I do. I sense it. Right. I sense there's a, a stirring. Uh, in the spirit realm, I sense another level. Turn. It's going. We've gone to another level. We have. Yeah. We yeah. really have. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I want to ask you about something. I talked to our friend Pray Medic about this uh, also, and uh, it seems the Lord is calling Mark a great number of people, more so than I've ever seen ever in my lifetime, honestly, into the role of intercessors and into the role of this uh, taking up the mantle of intercession over the country. Uh, look, the Lord's already touched you. The Lord has used you in such a way since 2011. It's unreal. And I just think that you were a precursor of other things that were coming by other individuals that it seems that the intercession of the, of the saints has, has also taken up a notch because there's a lot of people that have sensed this burden to pray for the country, to pray for the president. Have you sensed that too? Have you seen that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, because, uh, you know, Michael Ortega, I'm affiliated with, with Michael Ortega and Melissa Leggett, and their two uh, prayer chains, uh, prayer calls that they have. Uh, Michael Ortega is the strike or strike force of prayer.com, and Melissa Leggett is um, rocking the West Coast prayer group. And, you know, God's taking these whole prayer calls to a whole nother level because uh, on the strike force of prayer now, we have prayer calls in almost 40 states now. And some states, we have multiple calls in those states. Well, we, we believe God's fixing to do something even more now at this point because, you know, faith without works is dead. So we have to do something. This is where I believe Christians have become too passive because they've been too worried. The church system has taught them to be too passive. You know, they're too worried about the wealth of the influence and they, they've left out the warfare part. Uh, you know, uh, our, our friend, Sheila Zelensky, uh, she just had some kind of an offer from a TV uh, station or whatever it was, a uh, program, and they said, leave the spiritual warfare stuff out. And she was just, bye. <laughs> I saw that. You know, so uh, I don't blame her. I, I wouldn't have anything to do with it either. So it's like, you know, uh, again, you're, you're talking about the passivity of the church, what they've taught all these years. Faith without works is dead. So, you know, the Lord gave me something today. Boots on the ground is holding ground. So I believe now what you're going to see is God's going to begin to move these prayer calls now out of the calls, not so much out of it, but there's, it's going to move from prayer calls now to people actually walking the streets for the intercession. Part. Awesome. So this is going to be powerful, man. This is going to be, I, I think it's going to be an exciting thing uh, because, again, that's putting your faith in action right there. You know what I mean? This is, this is, this is going to go back, back to, this is why I believe that the church age is over. It's done. You, you know what I mean? The church stuff is a lot of these churches, doors are going to close, funds are going to dry up because the apostles, that's why the, the book of Acts, they acted on what they were supposed to be doing. The apostles went out, they, they right. preached the gospel to the themselves. It was boots on the ground. How do military it. troops hold ground? It's boots on the ground right there. So this is why the church has been so bad about they want to take, but they don't leave anything place to hold it. Well, now, folks, we're fixing to move into holding ground. We're not just going to take it. We're going to physically hold that ground. So th and spiritually hold that ground. So this is, this is going to be exciting, I believe, is what we're fixing to move into as far as that is concerned. And I think it's going to go back to the homes, Mark. We've talked about this a million times, buddy. And I think it's yep. these home groups and I think these home meetings. Look, I've gotten lampooned just like you have about talking about the systemized church. And and I don't care. I, look, I've got a, a lot of our audience out here tonight. They don't have affiliated churches anymore. They've, they've went right. into their homes and they've began these home groups where there's freedom to preach what they need to preach, say what they need to right. say, pray for what they need to pray. I saw Sheila's tweet, like you mentioned today. And I'm going to tell you something. The system... If you want to be part of that system, you have at it. But I'm going to tell you something. You're going to miss God. You're going to miss God, what he's doing in these last days, because the system, Mark, is just as swampy as the swamp creatures in Washington, because the, the church has its swamp. 
There's people in the church that do not want to see the plan of God on this earth come to pass. They do not. No, it's the deep. I call it the deep state church because they are affiliated with the deep state. It's a known fact that the CIA has infiltrated our seminaries. The mind control that's going on in the seminaries is, is staggering. The mind control that's going on in our pulpits is staggering. Uh, so the CIA has infiltrated our pulpits. I mean, I, I mean, the government has, you know, the 501c3, mm -hmm. we, we've said this before. So, I mean, th there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into this. People just don't realize the depth of this. You know, Jesus came to set us free from the very chains and shackles that the system puts you in. And people don't understand that. They, they really don't. They don't understand that when you walk into a church system, literally, you are being put in the very shackles that Jesus came to set you free from. Because it's all about wealth and control. Now, who, who is about and, and manipulation? Because they manipulate you with, with the wealth or whatever the case may be. So who is, in, who is the spirit behind the control and the manipulation? Jezebel. We've talked about this before on your show. Jezebel is controlling the church systems, period. It doesn't matter what religion you are. It's all about control. It's about influence. It's about controlling the people. So again, you know, Jesus came to set the captives free. I mean, I understand there's more to that spiritually, but there's, there's, there's a lot to this that people need to really search out, search a matter out on this. It's absolutely, Mark. And I, I don't, I don't think it's going to get any less intense, buddy. I think it, the, yeah. the dividing line, <clears throat> the dividing line between the apostate church and the true body of Christ is never going to be more clear to me in 2019 and beyond. And I think as we get closer into this, I think that there's, I put it like this, people have used the excuse, well, I'm not sure what, what I need to do. I don't think that excuse is going to be able to be used in the coming days. I think God is making a demarcation line in the sand because God never gives you a gray area, Mark. He pretty much makes it black and white. You either want the, you want me or you want the world system. It's up to you. Right. I mean, he don't, he, that's one thing I don't understand with Christians sometimes when I hear them say, well, I don't understand the Bible and I don't understand this. Look, why would God write his word down and give his word to prophets and apostles, anoint them with the Holy Spirit? And what did Peter say that this word was given to us? It was an anointed word. God does not anoint his word so we can be kept in the dark about it. He right. wants us to know what he's doing. And if we will connect with him and agree with him, and get in agreement with him, we will not be walking in darkness, and we will not be needing to ask the question, well, I don't understand. The Holy Spirit in us, Mark, is the spirit of truth. He wants to reveal God's truth to us in these last days. Right, and the problem is, is that you have the church system that's in the dark right now. Exactly. Let me give you an example of this right now, okay, because this is going to be huge right here. This is going to rock some people's boats. God is a gentleman. God will not violate your free will. He gives everyone a, 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 a free gift. That's your free will. He will not violate it, period. He gives you the free will to pick and choose whatever you want. Well, if you refuse your destiny, God's a gentleman. He's going to say, okay. He's going to move over here to the next person. He's going to give it to this person because you have pushed his hand away. The church system, not the congregation of God, the army, the remnant, the church system has pretty much done that, Chris. They have pushed the hand of God away and said, we have the denied our duty, which is to spread the gospel of this earth, and they have put it in, uh, and basically have wealth and influence has, has taken over. The, the worldly influence has taken sure. over. Now, let me give you a case in point of this. The information and revelation that God is releasing right now upon the earth, and we both know where some of these sources are coming from. We've got sources that are telling us what's going on. The people who are in the system can't see. They're blind. They're deaf. They can't see. They can't perceive. They can't see what's going on, what God is doing with the thousands of arrests. They're cleaning up the, the, the leadership. They're setting people free globally right now. The human trafficking, the sex trafficking, the pedophilia, whatever the case may be. They don't see it because they're in, they're in another dimension, if you will. They're stuck in a dimension of the world. They're stuck in Satan's frequency. That, that prophecy I wrote is, is, is coming up again. You know what I mean? Uh, where people are attached to that frequency. When you're attached to that frequency, you can't see, you can't perceive, you can't hear what God is doing on the earth. I hear it constantly on Twitter. You can look at some of the comments. When I'll post something on Twitter, some of the most negative comments are the Christians. And chances are they're in the church system because of that demonic influence over them. They're stuck in that dimension. When God's calling us to rise above that and be in his dimension where he's at in that third heaven, we, you know, we have to rise above that. So, But the church is, is kind of pushed the destiny away. Now, here's what's fixing to happen is that all this information is going to get dropped of what's been going on in our country for over 100 years, and 
the church is going to get left behind, Chris. They're already been left behind because uh, most of the church system has not been paying attention as to what this information is and what's coming because there's going to be people whose lives are going to be wrecked. They're going to be uh, unearthed, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? Who's going to be there to pick up the pieces? The church? Nope. Not happening, brother, unless they've been keeping up with this. Try Because they're already, if you have not been keeping up with this, you've already been left behind. You better play catch up real quick as to what this information is, what's been going on, because you're going to be needed, literally needed to help put the pieces back together again when people find out that the history we've been taught. That's right. It's all been wrong. That's right. And the people that we thought that were there in office to protect us were the very ones trying to literally kill us. So we are the ones that are going to have to step up and minister to these people literally. But the church has just totally denied it. And this is where I'm probably going to get hammered for this. I don't care it just because it's the truth. It is the bottom line truth. And they better get out of their mode real quick because judgment has already set in on the church. Judgment starts in the house of the Lord. Judgment has already set in. It's first and second Timothy four that their uh, conscience has been seared with a hot iron. Mm -hmm. They would no longer listen to sound doctrine or truth. And they don't want to hear the truth because they're too busy trying to spread their gospel, if you will, their, their, their prosperity gospel or whatever the case may be. They're going from church to church to church, spreading the gospel. That's not spreading the gospel folks. It, it's just not, it, you're going from church to church. It's not the saved that need Jesus. It's the unsaved that need Jesus. So we need to be going from street corner, to street corner, or whatever the case may be. But the point being is they have been pretty much, they have pushed God aside and said, no, we don't want that. We want wealth and influence. We want to control You approach your CEO or your pastor about the whole 501c3 thing like we've been talking about. I mean, be prepared for a manifestation like you've never seen from your CEO before. <laughs> right. I, I'm serious. I get the emails. I have I have There we go. Keep going. Keep going, buddy. I'm sorry. Say that last statement you just made. We just lost you for about 30 seconds. You mentioned the CEO manifestation. It's just that when you, you approach careful how you approach it. Just just careful. Yeah. And our apologies, folks. We're having a few blips. It's nothing major, but uh, just bear with us. These these come and go. We're having some weather uh, in both here in Tennessee and down in Florida today, but uh, we're going to get this through. We're getting about 99 percent. Yeah, we're getting about 99 percent of what Mark's saying. Uh, the the one percent we're not here, we're re we're going to re redo it anyway. Yeah. Hey, buddy, I want to I want to run something by you. Um, uh, something uh, came up since we've talked last uh, over the holidays, and it perked my ears. In fact, when I heard it, I heard it on television. I literally jumped out of the chair, and I said, "Mark Taylor, Mark Taylor." Uh, we found out in December, Mark, that the United States. Uh, became a oil exporter uh, in the positive for the first time in 75 years. And I remember uh, something that you told me back in February of uh, 2018, and we had an interview, and uh, you mentioned to me that the Lord had spoke to you about the fact that you believe that the oil revenues from this country, that America is, is headed once we get this darkness out of the way, once the Lord clears this air, clears the airspace, that one of the ways that the Lord is going to bring blessing on this country is this oil revenue that our debt is going to be so great, so powerful, that only God will get credit for this, but our national debt is going to be tackled. Uh, look, Mark, we're approaching nearly $1 trillion in interest alone in this debt. This debt's got to be addressed or America's going down. But the Lord's going to use the very thing that the globalists and the elitists have used to blackmail America for the last 70 years over. He's going to turn that around and use that. And I, I just wanted, as we're a year later after that, have you, are you still sensing that in the spirit? Well, I, I think there's going to be many components to taking down the debt. You know, that's just one component, let's, let's just say. I don't think that's going to be the only component. Gotcha. I think there's going to be many components. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's going to be a huge blessing to the United States either way. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, sure. uh, we just... Uh, the energy thing is going through the roof. The oil and gas is going through the roof. I think there's going to be all forms of different energy. I also believe that uh, at some point, now when, I don't know, I'm not prophesying this, so I mean, I'm not putting a timetable on this, but you will see free energy. We've had free energy for probably decades. I mean, since, you know, for how, for how long? I mean, I, but they just won't turn it loose because they want you, 
dependent on what I call dark energy, which, right. is, which is the grid to me. The free energy is whatever that was what God had originally created. And I believe it's the glory of God, to be honest with you. That's just me. That's just my own personal belief. I, I believe it's the glory of God that, that we've ta we can tap into. And we've got free energy for life. It doesn't matter what we want to run. But I, I believe that's coming at some point. Uh, but as far as the energy is concerned, I mean, you, you, you we're seeing massive. I mean, the Permian Basin's one. I, I mean, you, you, you've got stuff uh, uh, all over the place. Look at the uh, gas reserves in Israel right now, because the Lord said that America and Israel will be the top energy producers in the world. Saudi Arabia's wells are going dry. I mean, the Middle East is going dry right now, folks. Right. So what does that tell you? Right. Uh, I mean, you know, I think uh, OPEC's probably going to get pushed aside at some point completely. Um, the Lord uh, said in that one America, America prophecy that I have that uh, gas prices would go for a dollar below uh, a gallon. So, I mean, it's coming. You know, again, it's, 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 it's already been decreed. It's already been happening in the spirit. It just now has to manifest here in the natural. So we're, we're seeing gas prices fall like crazy right now. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're down to what below what we're down the dollar 90 something a gallon at this point. So That's away a gallon from, from, from <coughs> prophecy coming to pass. And so, I mean, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there. It just takes a little time. Yeah. And some parts of the country markets, even less than that. I mean, up here we're, we're at a dollar 70, uh, and I was traveling up 75 here the other day and, uh, 85. And to be honest with you, I mean, it's even less than that in some parts of the country. So yeah, it's, it's not far off. And, uh, far off. I think yeah. the OPEC people are sort of getting scared. Um, buddy, I want to ask you something. Um, and this is maybe not so much a spiritual question. This is just a, a general question about the country in general. The Democrats took the house, of course, this past Thursday right. and, um, you know, Mark, I've never seen, honestly, a more evil, wicked group of people. I, and I don't, I don't mean to throw stones, but I'm going to throw a stone. I swear. I mean, you got, you got dozens of these people that wouldn't even put their hand on the Constitution or the Bible to take their oath of office, taking it on the Koran, taking it on the Muslim. You've got a, a congresswoman up in Michigan, this Tlaib, this Muslim that supposedly slept with her sister or slept with her brother or something to get into the States, married her brother. I mean, that's how degenerate and that's how perverted these people are. And, you know, she calls the president an expletive, an mf -er, and just, just, just demonic. It, it just senses like a demonic anointing when these people talk. Right. Not that they're going to get anything done because the house, it's going to be the most impotent house we've ever had in the history of America because there's no, there's no way they're going to no. get a bill to President Trump's death that he'll ever sign no. anyway. No. But do you see the turmoil in that party is this self-destruction do you think it's yeah. god and the the president to bringing these people out in the open to reveal this evil agenda that we can again it's not going to be a gray area any longer that you will right. either have to choose that agenda or choose right. god's agenda when you go to the poll in 2020 that's it right there I, I, and i think they're setting it up for voter id uh the first thing about the girl that was running her mouth i would have to say well follow the money how did she get here who put her here because she didn't come here by happenstance. I, I, you know what I mean? I, I guarantee you there's somebody behind it, just like there was somebody behind Obama. Exactly. Like, uh, somebody behind Andrew Gillum, uh, all these guys that are trying to get in. This is the, Isla the Islamization of America, that their agenda 20, uh, what was it, 2021, or yeah. now it's moved to 2030 or whatever it is, their agenda. Yeah. So you've got all these things in place right now that are, that are taking place. Now, that, that everybody's, everybody's panicking about the House. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, my gosh, you're going to impeach Trump. They're not going to impeach Trump, <laughs> folks. It's got to go through the Senate. The Senate has – we've got a lock on the Senate. It's not going to happen. And that doesn't mean to, to stop praying, okay, because can they create some chaos? Yeah, they're probably going to create some chaos, but it's not that big a deal. It, it's like they're prepared for it. You know, we need to be prepared for it. Know that God's got a plan. And, uh, you know, I, I want to bring something out, too. I, saw, I shot you that uh, DM on Twitter yes. about California. This is important. This is huge. This is judicial watch, right? Coming from Talk about that. Watch. Now, this was like 1.5 million voters in California, in L.A. County or something, whatever it was, got removed that weren't eligible to vote or something like that. I can't remember the verbiage, but it was huge. Now, this was, to me, that's like sets precedence. So now this is going to start probably happening all over the place. So, I mean, uh, it, what people are going to find out, and I also find it very, very very strange. Don't you think that, that we were supposed to have a Homeland Security report out on December 23rd about the electoral voter fraud? Right. We haven't heard from it yet. Mm -mm. I think it's a little strange, don't you? That things are a little quiet sure. on that front because I just have it. I mean, I, I know for a fact that they stole the House. The House, they did not win the House. They did not win a lot of these elections across the country. Uh, it was a huge red tsunami. I've been attacked for saying it was a red tsunami and people don't understand. Again, it's in God's timing. 
you know, there are certain things that will be revealed and exposed where people will understand what's going on. This was a huge sting operation across the nation with the election to see where the voter fraud was. Now they're going to use this for voter ID. When we get voter ID, forget it. The Democrats are done. This is the implosion of the Democratic Party. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't think you will ever see you will see a Democrat in the White House for a long time, if ever again, because people have had it They're fed up with this mess. So you're seeing a lot of stuff. But that one thing with Judicial Watch, people need to play close or play close, close attention to that because that is a huge, huge Moab right there, exactly. right there for, for an exposure. Because they took one and a half million. What was I, I remember the verbiage they used? Yeah. Off the uh, voter rolls, yeah. Off the voter rolls. The yeah. People that don't even Absolutely. exist or whatever it was. So you're, you're going to find out, basically, that Donald Trump, and I've been saying this to, for a long time, that Donald Trump won the popular vote. Whether they want to believe it or not, it was stolen by Hillary Clinton through the illegal voter fraud, whatever the case may be. He Police smoked system. her. Well, I mean, when you can't even get 200 people, you got to pay 200 people to show up to your uh, <laughs> rallies. And Donald Trump's <laughs> packing them out down the street. I mean, they're lined up around, you know, 10 miles long. Yeah. I mean, Give me a break, man. I mean, I nobody's buying it. So, I mean, so a lot of this stuff's coming out. We just, people just need to relax. There's a plan in place. It's coming, man. It's happening. The House is impotent. They cannot do anything. They cannot do anything. And the House was the, tar I mean, the Senate was the target in with. That's where all our judicial uh, uh, people come from. Uh, you know, our, our, our Supreme Courts, which is what's really important. Uh, you know, so, I mean, and, and we got another judge probably coming up. Now, when that takes place, I don't know, but that's coming. Uh, so, I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff fixing to happen. Mark, I'm going to go out on a limb. Uh, a couple of things you mentioned, and it's not just the judicial places, but it's the cabinet nominations, too. I mean, President Trump's right. going to be reshuffling, I think, his administration here. I just sense there's a shuffling coming uh, among his inner circle. I think that he's gotten on to the fact uh, there was a lot of people that believed that the reason he brought some of these swamp creatures on at the beginning, the RNC was out of money. You know, he made a deal with the RNC. You, I'll, I'll help you, but you, I'll bring this guy in or whatever. Those, that's over. And I think that he's, he's about to reveal a lot of these enemies that he's already known that's never had his back. And I think you're going to see an exit of that. And uh, you know, uh, the media went apoplectic about this guy that uh, resigned over the uh, Syria policy. Well, he was an Obama appointee, and I think a lot of these old, old Obama, old swamp people. They're going to be gone in 2019 and 2020, and there's going to be a fresh deck of people on deck that's got the president's back, including the defense secretary. Look, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of the new AG coming in, this bar guy. I mean, he was a Bush guy. But Whitaker has got two months, basically, to clean house. Special appointees, Mark, have this ability to do things without all the scrutiny, and they can do a massive amount of things without having to worry about Congress on their back. Because I got nothing to lose, man. I got 60 days, and I can let it all hang out, and I can clean this mess up. And who cares if they scream at me and the media screams at me? It ain't going to matter. I see something like that coming. And let me just say this at the, about the Democrats. I'm going to give it back to you. I think the only reason that the Democrats are going to have any influence in the country is the very reason that we've had conflict anyway, and that's the media. Because the only people that are going to be spousing what the Democrats are going to be doing is the television. It's not going to be the people out here in America. We don't care because we know they can't do anything. They're powerless. But they will make it seem like, like you mentioned a while ago, people are getting all upset about the impeachment threat. Who cares? The only people that are talking impeachment are, are pundits. The only people that's talking impeachment is, is uh, you know, Jared Nadler. And the only people that's talking impeachment are the very same people that have got no power. You may think they got power. The media may cause you to believe that. You know, they, they were saying yesterday that Nancy Pelosi gets up on Thursday and claims that she's as equal as the president when it comes to power. Look, that lady is smoking reefer, Mark. That's California dreaming, buddy, on steroids. She does not have the same power as the president uh, of the United States. Uh, and again, you're dealing with the mainstream media. You're dealing with Satan's frequency. And you yes. get the emails and the Twitter feeds or the, the tweets all the time. Oh, my gosh, the panic tweets, the panic emails. Like, look, stop listening to the mainstream media. How many times do we have to tell you this? It's, it's tell lie vision for a reason. Tell lie vision, okay? That's a great point. <laughs> a television program because you are that. being programmed. Stop watching that mess you know what i mean it's like you know people that say this oh my gosh this is going to happen that's going to happen it's like congratulations folks 
you've just been indoctrinated into the new world order way of thinking because you have just fallen prey to their programming, which is exactly what they want. They want you to look, they want you to hear, they want you to perceive exactly the way they want you to look, hear, and perceive. You have just fallen prey to their television programming, okay? So stay away from the news media, the mainstream media, go to Twitter, go to the president's Twitter feed, get the, the scoops from the from him. president himself, the truth. Now, there's people Twitter you can trust, okay, uh, that are alternative type, type media type stuff. And so I encourage people to go there. Stay off the mainstream media. There's only certain people on Fox that I would even recommend it that right now yeah. at this point. And they're being uh -huh. hamstrung right now as well. They because are. they're not able to put out the, the complete truth. They're able to get parts of it, but not all of it, because they're being held back. So, yeah, I'll agree with that. Janine Pirro is one of them. And, I mean, you can tell on Saturday night that she wants to say so much more than she's saying, but it's almost like she's got this right. – this choke you just Yeah, it's like a, a rope yeah. around her. It is. Yeah. And uh, I see it. And I, I tell you, Mark, uh, the media is going to be held complicit with this too. I, I feel yeah. that a lot of this is coming with the politicians won't just touch right. – politicians i think a lot of fake news people are going to go down with these arrests too i do yeah. i just sense this could be some shocking revelation about some of the stuff they've been involved in illegally uh for disinformation in this country and i don't i don't know how you feel about it i think to me it's been intriguing to watch the investigation into the social media giants too like facebook and twitter and google and things like that because I think there's going to be a revelation of how much they have basically stuck their finger in the eye of America's privacy, but also targeted voices like yourself, like others that are speaking the truth. And I think God's going to reveal that too. And I think there's going to be recompense on that as well to me. Yeah. I, well, the news media, you're going to see some news media outlets. We've already seen news media outlets go down. Go down. Uh, a couple of yeah. them, you know, and you're, but you're going to see news media personnel, uh, you, you know, that are going to go down. They've probably got indictments with their names on them. Uh, and we all know we who it. some of those are. Uh, you know, I think the last count now, I think we're up to 70,800 and something indictments right now. Wow. Which is incredible. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, there is stuff happening. That's the point. That's what people just need to understand. There is so much happening right now. Think about that 70,000 indictments. Look at the work that has to go into preparing for these cases. Uh, I mean, you know, um, they're, they're already trying to prep the, the population. This is our job also as well to try to prep the, the population. Say, so look, the truth is coming out. It's starting to come out. You need to get prepared for this truth to come out because this is, this is going to be mind blowing period. You know, you know, some of the stuff we've talked about. So um, it, red pilling, you know, some people call it, you know, we're trying to red pill the people, you know, trying to tell them, say, look, this is what's coming folks. You need to get prepared, get ready. Mark, I want to uh, revisit something you said, uh, and uh, since we talked, uh, we had the funeral of H.W. Bush, and you mentioned him all ago a little bit. Um, you know, the Lord gave you a prophecy right around the time of Harvey, and uh, Hurricane Harvey, and he said, two will be taken, three will be shaken. Right. Um, I'm going to throw this at you. This is just a Chris, Chris thing, and I'm just going to get your feeling about it. Um, I gotta, I've been pondering on this. I've been meditating on what you said, and I've been looking at this bigger thing. I'm not so sure that the other one that's going to be taken is going to be Carter, buddy. I'm not may so not sure be. it ain't Bush may 43. May I think it may be Bush 43. You know, uh, who knows? I, I, who knows? I don't know. Who knows? You know, I, I don't because here again, I I thought it was Carter. Now I'm starting to think maybe it's not because here again, God is the one that spoke the prophecy through me. And again, my expectations were thinking that maybe it's Carter. I'm not so sure it is now at this point. Not it may not be. So – I'm not going to put my expectations out there saying that, yes, it's definitely Carter, but you know, because could it be, could be, maybe it's not, I don't know, but that's the whole thing with the prophetic. You got to be careful with because they're sure. mysteries. And so, you know, um, even me as the person speaking the word, I can get caught up in my unrealistic expectations and, and thinking it's going to go one way when in fact it doesn't. I've had that happen to me too many times already. So I don't put, I try not to put too many expectations on these words when I, when God gives them to me. Well, I know that, Mark, and I don't know, look, I'm, I, I, I lean on you a lot to talk about these things, and I, I know how the prophetic works a little bit. I know that it's an ongoing revelation. Look, right. the Lord don't just speak to you on a Monday and then take five years and don't say nothing. I mean, it's ongoing. There's there's things that the Lord says every day. There's the things that the Lord reveals every day. And I think that, um, how can I put this? 
I just, I just think that all of this is like a rolling train. I just think that there's, there's so many components to what's about to happen. And whereas, again, our natural minds think, well, you know, who would be the most logical choice? Usually when the most logical thing comes in your mind, you need to forget that because that's probably just exactly opposite of what God's about to do right. and, and so forth. And uh, I, just, I just know that there's, that funeral was so weird. And I know I don't want to get in all the envelope stuff with you and all that, but because right. it, it don't matter to me what was on that envelope. But it did it did make for some pretty interesting theater to watch the expression on those people's faces, whatever it was. Right. And it don't matter the theories out there and all the whatever. But I will say this: um, I think that Bush Senior dying was a message to the country. That the, because he was, to me, the face of the deep state. He was the face of the cabal. If there ever was a figurehead, and him, McCain too, but, but Bush Sr. especially. And I just think that it was a message that almost like you mentioned the horses with Obama. And, uh, you know, you, the Lord always speaks to you in horses. Well, let me tell you something. There was a big horse that died in Bush Sr., and I just think it was an opening to something that the Lord's saying, you know, this is a symbol, a sign that, that this is coming down. I'm just, I'm just curious how you feel about that. Well, you know, you know, the funeral was, was strange to watch because you had them all, all in one room right there, man. All the heads were all in one room. And God bless Donald Trump to be able to walk in there and his wife, Melania. <laughs> God bless him to be able to walk in there and just sit next to these people. <laughs> you better believe it. I mean – the anointing of God had to be on that man and that, and that woman to be able to do that. The strength to walk in there and to face these people like that, uh, knowing how evil, how much evil was sitting in that place. Yes. Uh, and right next to you, sitting right next to you, behind you, you know, whatever the case may be. And knowing that these people in that room all want you gone. So, I mean, you know, the courage that this man has, the boldness that God has put in him, this is not a manly courage. This is not a manly boldness. This is a godly courage and godly boldness, uh, you know, courage, boldness, because that is what the supernatural anointing of God does right there, is to be able to walk into a place like that and part the Red Sea the way he did and sit down and, you know, maybe he was comfortable, maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I have no clue. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. But either way, to be able to do something like that and to face your enemies like that, that's pretty incredible. And, you know, he, he didn't look like he was shaking. Yeah, it, it didn't look like he was shaking one bit, and he stared yeah. him down, and I loved it. And, you know, some of these pundits on television, I heard one of them make the statement. He said, well, uh, we can be certain that he's not part of the President's Club. And I just I yelled back right. into the TV immediately. I said, that's the idea, dude. Yep. That's why we elected him. We didn't want him to be right. part of the President's Club. Let the President's right. Club be the President's Club. They're all going to jail anyway. Um, Mark, another thing I want to talk to you about, uh, and, and we've not really covered this a lot, but I, I want to discuss it with you, and that's the Supreme Court. Um, we've had Brett Kavanaugh on the bench, and, of course, Ginsburg was on the brink of death. She uh, takes this vote back in December from her deathbed, basically. But uh, Roberts is turning into a weird figure on the Supreme Court. And I know that there's a lot of people out there and I have to say me included, I don't know what all they've got on him. I don't know what all is going on over him, but it seems that from day one, he has turned into somebody and something that, that I don't think he was really seen to be at the beginning because he was a, seemed to be a fairly strong conservative judge when he was appointed, but he's become anything but. And He's taken a lot of personal shots at the president, which is unprecedented, and court and what's coming because I believe that the shuffling may not even be Ginsburg. That I, look, I've been praying, and I don't think I want anything harmful to happen, Roberts. I've literally been praying for the Lord to get him off the bench. I have. I've started praying that the Lord remove him because if he's going to be an obstacle and he's going to be this kind of individual, it's time to clean house at the Supreme Court too. The Supreme. There's a possibility that we could uh, um, maybe even see six at this point instead of five. So, I mean, if, if that's the case, if people want to say I got it wrong, I got it wrong. I hope in this case this is one time that, that I did get it wrong because six judges would be astounding versus five. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's a possibility that it could be six at this point uh, right now with everything that we're, we're seeing.
but five for sure. That much I do know. Um, you know, when you when you look. Uh, no, let me back up. We had a little blip. Are you talking about okay. that he will have the chance to choose five? In other words, Trump would have the chance to choose right. five new judges. Okay, good deal. Correct. Yep. He, he will have a chance to, to, to five. We've already got two, three more coming. Um, there, There is a good possibility we could maybe see six. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it, look, if I got that one wrong, I, that's fine. Like I said before, it, it, you know, and that's fine. I, that's one time I hope I do get it wrong because six judges would be great. But, I mean, you know, who, who knows? But, you know, when you find out, when the truth starts coming out, Chris, of what Obama was and who he was, where he's from, whatever the case may be, you know, if, if he's deemed that he wasn't even eligible to be president, because there's some saying that That's right. Bush 43 and 41 both weren't eligible to be president. That's right. This is all about the history that we're learning now that we've been talking about that people are going to understand that, hey, this is, when you start finding this stuff out, that means everything they did is null and void. That's very true, Mark. God, I hadn't which, thought about that. Now, null and voids right. two Supreme Court justices. Exactly. So think about that. Those two would be gone immediately if it ever came to that. Now, I'm not saying it is. I know I what you're say saying. That, but you know what I'm saying. Well, and that's why people need to realize that all this talk, because I, I, even from the right, I get this sometimes, and I hear people say, well, why are y'all digging all this stuff up? Why do you keep talking about the birth certificate? Why do you keep talking about the origin of Obama? It's on. He's gone. But we, people don't realize, Mark, that that origin means a lot because, as you said, if it's determined right. that he's the fraud, you know, right. Clint Eastwood made the greatest statement in the world at the 2012 uh, convention, and people mocked him. Uh, his colleagues mocked him. Uh, and, 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 you know, he got up and said, look, we're going to find out that Barack Obama is the greatest fraud perpetrated on the American public. What are we going to do about it? I'm going to tell you something. That statement is just as important in 2019 as it was seven right. years ago. Because if it's found out that he was not a legal president, Mark, as you said, all of that is voided, buddy. It's game over. And you yeah. talking about a while ago the Democrats never seeing the White House again? I mean, <laughs> let me tell you something. That if, if there was nothing that solidified that, but if that happened, then it would that would be game over for not even the House, but they would never have a majority in the Congress ever again. Well, because, you, you're not going to see them have a majority in elections again either, because when the voter ID comes out, that's all done. It's over with at that point, because that's the only way. And here's the other thing I, I want people to understand, too, that we've got some Republicans out there to be stealing these elections, too. Yes, that's right. You're right. So don't think it's just Democrats. It's it's all, all across the board, which. who, uh, you know, who's been paying them off, you know, uh, then they're going to find out then, then where this stuff is coming from. This electoral voter fraud uh, is, is going to stop at this point. Well, it's interesting today, uh, again, we're recording this on Friday, but on the first day that the Democrats took office, one of the first things they did, they passed, one of them put a bill on the floor to get rid of the Electoral College. And I found that intriguing. Uh, because that's their, that's their game plan. They're, they want to tinker with our election systems and uh, Mark, you know, again, I just, that's, that's where it all comes down to. And, and we've got to find the truth about the fraud and we've got to find the truth and we've got to have, let me tell you something. We've got to have a clean justice system and we've got to have a clean electoral system in this country for this country right. to be America. I'm sorry. Those two things have got to take place, period. And I, I encourage our audience that if you want to know how God feels about justice, go to his word. Just do a Google search and do a Bible search on the word justice in the scriptures. I'm going to tell you something. The Bible has a lot to say about clean justice. Mark has quoted the scripture many times about bribes pervert the justice. It perverts justice because when you're taking a bribe, it perverts a judge's thinking. It perverts a judge's decision making. And it perverts anybody's decision making that's in power. But Mark, that's what God wants for our country. And I go back to this I said a while ago that God has seen all of this from the beginning. He has seen the corruption. He sees things that nobody else sees. And he wants this for America because we've never had a country without it. We've never had a true uh, time of our history that we've not had a taint of that in our government. And I just believe in these last days as this harvest is getting ready to come in, that he wants America to be free of those shackles and free of those bonds. Yep. And it's going to start with him and he's going to be doing this through Donald Trump and other people. But 
I, that's what I feel, that it, it's justice and elections. Those two things have got to be pure in our country if we're ever going to believe we have a, a true democracy and a true republic. Well, and you're going to see that happen. This is, this is what this whole thing was about in the midterms, I believe, is exposing a lot of this stuff. Uh, you know, this is why, you know, you've got people sitting in there. Most of the House doesn't even belong there right now. We, we all know that. You know what I mean? There was, there was a huge tsunami across this country. Uh, you know what I mean? But, you know, are they going to remove these people and have special elections? That I don't know. Uh, anything's possible right now we'll at this see. point. We'll see. You know what I mean? Uh, we don't know. So, but, I mean, the point being is that it's all setting up for 2020. And 2020 is going to be uh, a whole new election. And what people have to uh, – and here's where they got to be careful. The government's got to be careful is that at some point they're going to have to break this information about the electoral voter fraud because people are losing confidence in their electoral process because they're not going to want to go out and vote. They're going to say, what, what difference does my vote count? It's going to go to the Democrats anyway, or it's going to switch right there before my eyes because Soros has got his fingers in this machine, you know, whatever the case may be. So at some point they're going to have to – instill the confidence back into the people again and say, no, we're going to act on this. This is what has got to be done. Justice is going to be Will they do that? I don't know. We'll I understand, buddy. Mark, we got about five minutes. Thank you so much, buddy, for coming on our show today. We're going to have you on standby this year. We're going to have you back on quite a bit. But uh, as we bring this to a close, I just wanted you to uh, maybe wrap us up for the next three or four minutes, final thoughts, and we're going to have you pray over the country. But uh, I think, as you said at the beginning, I think we can all we bring it back down to what you said at the beginning. We better get our seatbelt on, and we better get a little bit of courage. We out here, we the yeah. people. Because it's not going to be for the faint at heart what's about to happen. And if, if we're going to get uh, bent out of shape and emotional about it and right. get our feelings involved in it, we're not going to survive the next year. And we're not going to survive 2020. And we got to listen to God. And we've got to listen to the voice of God, not the voice of man. Because that's the only thing that's going to get us through what's coming. And I don't care how much chaos is over the country. God's in control, Mark. Right. He's in control, buddy. Well, and we just need to be uh, cognizant of the fact to stop listening to the mainstream media, get out of that doom and gloom uh, dimension, if you will, and get into God's dimension up here in the spirit, stay out of the emotions. I know, look, we're all human. We're all human. Yes, we we all get, you know, we see something happen. We react sometimes out of emotions. It's going to happen, folks. There's nothing you do. You fall, you get back up, you get on the horse again. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, it's just when you, when you right. fall off that horse and you stay off that horse, that's when God has a hard time being able to use you at that point, when you're being negative or whatever the case may be, because you're, now you're stuck down there. You, you've got to pull yourself back up and get on the horse, start riding in. So, I mean, uh, uh, so that's what I want to encourage people with. You know, you, if you fall off, get back up, get in the saddle, start riding again. You know, stay, stay positive. Even though you may not see anything happening, know that it's already happened in the spirit. God has already spoken it. And it, it, through the prophetic words, that it is going to come to pass, period. That's the bottom line. So take comfort in that. That's great, buddy. Mark, go ahead and have a word of prayer over our audience, buddy, and we'll wrap this up, man. Good to see you today. Yep, absolutely. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just bless everyone under the sound of my voice right now, Lord. Oh, I just ask that you would bring a boldness to people. Father, help them to minister to people, to be able to tell people the, the truth. Give them courage to speak the truth, Father. Well, when they fall off, uh, they would be they, when they fall down. They'd be able to get back up, dust the dust off of them, and, and get back in the fight again. Father, we all get emotional sometimes. Lord, we ask that people would get their emotions in check and be ruled by the spirit, not by the emotions. Lord, Father, we ask that you would just remove the scales off of people's eyes that have been blinded, the spiritual scales off their eyes, and, and open their deaf ears, Lord, so they can see what you are truly doing in this move. And your not only just your country, Lord, but this is a global. Uh, not just a patriotic move, but this is the spirit of Elijah that's arising on the earth right now, Lord. And we ask that, you're, that uh, you would protect America, Lord, that, that you would, uh, we just cover America in the blood of Jesus. We cover the president and, and his family in the blood of Jesus right now, Lord. We ask that uh, uh, you would re um, release your protecting angels right now, Lord. And we decree and declare that they would stand shoulder to shoulder so no evil can penetrate around America, around Donald Trump and his family right now, Lord. Yes. So, Father, we just, we just ask right now, Lord, that uh, you would move people into a greater anointing and to bring them out of those, that, those dimensions, those doom and gloom dimensions, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind any of this doom and gloom that's on the people right now 
in the name and by the blood of Jesus, and I loose in them right now, Father, straight from heaven, a boldness and a courage to come forth and speak the truth and speak your word, Father, and spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark. And uh, listen, uh, I just, I'll tell you this publicly. Uh, if the Lord, you know, you know, you got uh, open, open uh, avenue here at the Mac Files, if the Lord gives you something powerful and say, Chris, I got to share it, you just, you know, you got an uh, open door and you don't need an announcement or uh, invite to do that anytime. And I want to just say to this man publicly, this is, he has become a good, dear friend of mine. We're, we're like brothers. And I tell you, um, I encourage you folks to follow Mark's Twitter feed, but just pray for him. You need to pray. It's not just following him on Twitter. Mark needs your prayers and his family and just cover him with the same powerful prayer. He just prayed over our president. He needs that prayer too, because the devil uh, does not want the prophetic word to get out. I heard somebody tell me the other day, Mark, and they were right, um, that one of the greatest areas of attack that's under attack in the body of Christ right now is the prophetic voice, the prophetic anointing. I don't know what it is. I, I do know a little bit, but I, that prophetic anointing brings out God, but it brings the devil out too, because they know that a prophetic announcement is different than a preacher getting up behind a pulpit and reading three points in a poem and, and saying good night. When you start hearing from God and you start getting the direct word from heaven and you start speaking that, the devil does not want that going out because he knows that sets people free and it changes people's lives forever. And I want to thank you, my friend, for your courage. Thank you for your ministry and thank you for your friendship on this program. And uh, we look forward to a great 2019, my friend, together. And God bless you. Thank you for joining me. And thank you for making the Mac Files your first avenue, your first interview of 2019. That makes us feel good, buddy. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for having me on, brother. It's always a pleasure and honor to be on. Always same here too, buddy. God bless you out there. God bless your families. As we end every program, we're going to do the same tonight. God bless this great nation of America. Pray for our president and folks continue to keep the faith and keep praying. Don't let the mantle of intercession down right now. You need to up it, if anything, and make sure that you're praying for this country because it needs it. And that is how we're going to end it. Good night.